Welcome to the world of tomorrow, aka the Nerdist Podcast number 903, non-traditional Nerdist Podcast episode, incredibly special for me and uh, other Futurama fans. This is Radio Rama. It is a uh, a new Futurama, actually a double Futurama episode, uh, kind of a radio play. Um, I'm not I'm not going to talk too much up top, but it's important for me to kind of tell you how this happened and and thank some people and uh, let you know about a couple of things. So. Uh, About a year ago or so, I emailed David X. Cohen uh, because Futurama is incredibly special to me. Uh, Not only did I watch the series when it originally was on, uh, but my wife Liddy and I, when we were dating, we used to watch, uh, we rewatched episodes every night when we'd get in bed. We'd cuddle up and watch a Futurama episodes. It is special to me for so many reasons. Um, the cast of the show is amazing. The creators of the show are amazing. It's a, it's a very special it's a very special project. An unkillable show, might, one might say, because uh, it just keeps coming back. And I I will never believe that it's not going to come back again at some point. Right now, in podcast and video game form, uh, but maybe more. So I said to him, "Hey, what if you took the expensive animation part out and we did this kind of radio play version and put it out as a podcast?" Uh, and he said, that's not a bad idea. So cut to, um, I don't know, about a month or two later, uh, I went to this thing called uh, outtake Arama, which is a, a live show at the Improv with some of the cast members, Billy West, John DiMaggio, Maurice LaMarche, and they, bas- they, they, they basically just do old uh, celebrity outtake voices, and, uh, and they do some Futurama favorites and characters that they've done. And I ran into Matt Groening there, and I pitched him the idea, and he didn't punch me in the throat. He actually thought it sounded all right, and uh, he's an incredibly cool guy, and uh, he was really nice to me, and a uh, good, good dude. So uh, a little while after that, David X. Cohen emailed me and said, do you still want to do this radio play podcast thing? Because I think there's an opportunity to do it. I said, absolutely. Uh, And then I got connected with TinyCo and uh, TinyCo, uh, a subsidiary of Jam City. But TinyCo, uh, I want to thank Michael Sandwick and Andrew Green, who stepped forward and said, hey, we're going to we're going to help make this happen. So it happened. Uh, original writers of, you know, some original writers of Futurama, David, of course, David X. Cohen, and then uh, Ken Keeler and Patrick Verone. Uh, and, uh, and I'm sure Matt Groening probably weighed in on that too. And, uh, and they, they did it. And it's the entire cast. So I want to thank everyone. Uh, Billy West, John DiMaggio, David Herman, uh, Maurice LaMarche, Phil Lamar, Katie Segal, uh, Tress McNeil. It was uh, it was quite an experience, and I got to be the villain in the radio play, uh, Klaxon, which was crazy for me to actually be a part of the process. So thank you to everyone for allowing that to happen, and this was all. Uh, done and financially justified to help promote Futurama Worlds of Tomorrow, which is uh, an incredible mobile game on iOS and Android. I've been playing it since it came out, and uh, it, it, it in and of itself is its own Futurama episode. And uh, they actually made me a premium uh, head in a jar in the game. I'm a character in the game, and there's a lots of there are a lot of fun premium characters. They update the content every so often. Often, but uh, if you play me as a character and you level me. up, up, you will unlock more animations and more stuff. So just an incredible fan experience for me from this s- silly little idea. And uh, so it just means, hey, dream big. And if you have crazy ideas, tell them to people because some of them might actually happen. And uh, then uh, that is literally your dreams coming true. So thank you so much to Futurama, David X. Cohen, Matt Groening. Thanks to Tiny Co. and Jam City. Again, Michael Samwick and Andrew Green and everyone else who worked on this. And, uh, and, and, and here you go. This is Radio Rama, the new double episode of Futurama. And I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. Uh, I believe you will. As uh, the Nerdist Podcast number 903, technically 903 also. Don't forget to download Futurama Worlds of Tomorrow on iOS and Android. Here we go. Katie, roll the good news, everyone. <laughs> Coming to you direct from the 31st century, it's Futurama, the show that never dies, but is so sick it lost its video. Brought to you by Bach the Avengers Borax Flakes. When you want flakes, why not try Borax? One morning, the Planet Express crew was meeting in the conference room, when suddenly, the professor entered with good news. Let's listen, shall we? Good news, everyone! Your favorite canceled TV show is coming back in the form of a low-budget podcast! Yay! Yay! Work! Wait, what show are we talking about? 
All my circuits, of course. The robot soap opera starring legendary acting unit Calculon. Oh, right. We used to watch that every day after work. And during work. Why'd we stop? Because Calculon died. Twice. Yes, in agony. But luckily, his voice box survived. And like all actors, his mouth works independently of his brain. Hey, Bender, you're here too. Weren't you on all my circuits once? Bite my shiny metal ass! <laughs> and yes, Amy, I was. I played Calculon's swarthy Latino son. Antonio Calculon Jr. I remember that, man. You were voted worst actor of all time. That's fake news. There were millions of illegal voters. A lot of people are saying I was the best ever. Guess who's also here? It's Zoidberg, why not? <laughs> Shut up, Zoidberg. I'm still talking. Okay, now I'm done. Psst, Leela. Yeah? Shh. I made you a present, and I'd like to give it to you in private. Oh, Fry. That's so thoughtful, depending on what it is. It's in the basement, just down this long, greasy staircase. <sighs> oh! Oh! Ah! Oh! Oh! Ah! Oh! 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 Mm -hmm. So where's that present I've been hearing not enough about? Right over here. Just let me turn it on. And... Ta-da! It took me weeks to get every detail just right. Do you like it? I'm not sure. What the hell is it? What does it look like? Uh, a jumble of flashing blobs that give me a headache? What? How can you say that? It's a realistic self-portrait of me. I've been learning the art of 3D laser sculpture. And you thought I'd like that? I can't see in stereo, Fry. I only have one eye. Oops, I forgot. You forgot the main thing about me? The thing that defines my existence? But, 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 but you also have purple hair. That's it. Our on-again, off-again relationship is officially off. Again? Permanently. I've told you 50 times I can't see in 3D. But it's like you can't hear my voice. Picking up the 3D sculpture, Leela carefully scaled the greasy stairs and stormed back into the conference room. Can you believe this piece of junk Fry gave me? Wow! Ooh, amazing! What a magnificent nude sculpture of Fry! Nude? You can see every tiny detail, even his penis. It can only be described as a quasi-erotic masterpiece of three-dimensional meta-representationalism. I'm just glad I have two eyes to appreciate it. Now I feel even worse. Apparently, I'm the only one who can't savor the subtleties of Fry's digital ding-dong. Okay, fine. The gift was a mistake. I'll throw it out. No, you Claudner Amos. You can't throw digital garbage in the analog trash. Digital trash needs to be dragged and dropped onto Junkleon 7, the deleted file planet. Does there really have to be a whole planet for everything? Bon voyage! And so, the crew boarded the Planet Express ship and began the dramatic countdown. 999, 998, 997, 996... Let's go already! As the ship flew through deepest space, Bender the Robot grew pensive. You know... I have only one regret in life. I have five. That's too many. I just wish... <laughs> I just wish my mother had seen how great I was on all my circuits. <laughs> but she didn't watch. Why not? TV offends her religious sensibilities. Plus, she's got no eyes. I thought your mother was just a robot arm. Not just a robot arm. She's also a grieving widow and mother of three. And I haven't seen her in 15 years. I've been a bad son. <laughs> oh, we're here. Doodly -doo. Doodly -doo. Doodly -doo. Doodly -doo. Donning their protective space leggings, the crew members descended onto the planet's filthy surface. Come on, let's dump Fry's one-man porno. It's not porno, it's folk art. For folk who like to see me doing a naked headstand. Blech! Drop it like it's hot and let's go. Whoa! 
Whoa, 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 whoa! I need to steal something first. What's the most valuable digital file? I don't know. I guess whichever has the most ones. Right. Maybe this thing. Whoa! What was that? Who cares? I'm just gonna put it in my chest cabinet. And not worry whether it might or might not resurface later in dramatic fashion. And so the ship returned to Earth. Bender's chest bulging with the mysterious digital file. The whole crew was happily beating Dr. Zoidberg with a banjo when suddenly the phone rang. Ow! 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 Hooray! I'm being beaten by friends! Ow! I get it! Hello, Planet Express, home of Bender. Bender speaking. How may I bender your call? A long distance call for Mr. Bender. He's not here. Place hold for Calculon. Oh my god, Calculon! I'm here! I'm here! Don't hang up! Go ahead, Mr. Calculon. You're on speakerphone with Bender. Hello, Bender. You're probably wondering why I'm calling to tell you my show's coming back as a podcast. And I'd like you to reprise your role as Antonio Calculon Jr. <gasps> Thank you! Goodbye! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Hold on, Calculon! Bender gave the worst performance in history! Why are you bringing him back? Because once you've established a character, the audience won't stand for any recasting. No matter how excruciatingly incompetent the actor! Ah, so you're getting the original writers back too? No, we fire them all the time. It saves money, and it's fun. Are you in, Bender? Yeah, but I want 1.2% of net. Absolutely not. Deal! I'll see you 7 a.m. tomorrow. We start 10 a.m. next Tuesday. I'll be waiting. It was Calculon. I got the part. Yay! Yay! We already heard, but it beats getting hit with a banjo. Man, I can't wait to go tell my mother. Aw, oh, Bender, that's sweet. I'm sure she'll have a lot to say. Fry, you idiot. Leela, give me that banjo. Ow! Ooh, ah, what did I do? My mother can't talk, okay? She has no mouth. She uses sign language, which is a form of talking. Uh, but ah, 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 don't make me get the bagpipes. Ow! <laughs> After another severe beating, Bender set off to visit his mother at the assisted computing facility. Fry went along, as did Amy, a renowned sign language interpreter whose skills had never before been of the slightest use. Well, here we are outside her door. Mom, it's me, Bender, your middle son. Can I come in? Are you decent? How's she gonna hear you knocking? I thought she was a robot arm. She's not deaf, you idiot. Amy, hand me that piano! Sorry, I deserve that. Oh, God, she looks horrible. Hi, Mom, you look great. These are my friends, Fry and Amy. Nice Hi, to meet Mrs. you. Hi, Mrs. Rodriguez. Ah! Ooh, she's hitting me, too! That's sign language, dum-dum. You're just standing too close. What's she saying? She says, Bender. Why haven't you visited or called a single time in 15 years? You bent your mother's heart. I'm sorry, Ma. I only wanted to make you proud and stuff. Speaking of which, get this. I'm going to be on the new All My Circuits podcast. Woo! Go, Bender. Go, Bender. She says, that's nice. Nice? Mom, it's a podcast. You love podcasts. Are you feeling all right? She says, it's nothing. Don't worry. It's just a slight cough. <coughs> wow, you are a good translator. What's wrong, Mom? Give it to me straight. Are they kicking you out because I don't bother to pay the bills? No, Bender. <coughs> I'm dying. After a brief confusion where Fry stupidly thought Amy was dying, the horrible truth became clear. Oh, Mom, you can't die. You can't. Not without first hearing me on a podcast. <laughs> the drama only gets worse when Futurama returns. After this word from the Borax Kid. Howdy, folks. If you're like me, and you're probably not, you're made of solid borax. But when it comes to keeping your Sunday suit clean and white, solid borax just don't cut it. You need flakes. Clock the Avengers Borax Flakes. The only flakes made from me, the Borax Kid. Ask for it by chemical formula. Na2, B4, O7, 10H2O. This is the Borax Kid saying goodnight, and always keep one eye on your genitals.
NA2B407, 10H2O. That was the Borax Kid, everyone. Now, before we return to Futurama, we have a special guest and also Dr. Zoidberg. Here's Hermes Conrad and Dr. Zoidberg. Thanks, Tom. Say, have you heard about the new Futurama game? Yes, I have. And now, back to our show. Wait, wait. Nobody told me about that. A Futurama game? Why aren't I in it? You are, you stupid crab. We just didn't pay you. Hooray, I'm in it. I just wish I weren't too poor to pay the millions of dollars such fine entertainment must cost. It's free. Free. Free? I'll take two. Say, Hermes, what's this free top quality game called? Uh, I'm not actually sure. It's called Futurama Worlds of Tomorrow. Download it now on your mobile device. Available on the App Store and Google Play. I don't have a phone. Too bad. And now, back to our program. Bender has just received the devastating news that his mother is unwell. And remember, when you hear the strange noise... (laughs) That's your reminder that Bender has a mysterious digital file from space in his chest cavity. Let's listen as he stands silently by his mother's side at the hospital. Ooh, excuse me. You feeling okay, Ma? Still dying? (gasps) Here comes the doctor with the test results. Mrs. Rodriguez, I... Don't quite know how to say this. Is it good news? What's the diagnosis? I'm afraid your mother is suffering from planned obsolescence. No! She'll be dead within a matter of days. Days? But she has to hear my podcast. Is she going to make it till Tuesday at 10? A.M. or P.M.? A.M. Yes. Hooray! Woo-hoo! Excuse me. The days flew by, and before you knew it, It was Tuesday at 10 a.m., and the cast of All My Circuits was gathering at the recording studio. Okay, people, mic check. We're live in two minutes. Who's on mic one? It is I, Calculon, man of a thousand voices, all magnificently similar. Mic two? Monique, fembot of mystery. Or am I? Mic three! Is that you, boxy robot? (coughs) No, you don't have time for a bathroom break. Mike Four! Hi, I play the part of human friend. But in real life, my name is... No one cares! Shut up! And finally, Mike Five. Who's on Mike Five? Hello? Anyone on Mike Five? I'll be there in a minute. I'm just letting my guests in in the control booth. Hey, Bubblegum T! Hey, Abby, well, Randy, you, Roberto, you, even you, Fat Bot! Hello? The gang's all here. Hey, Calculon's back! Mm. This control booth's got some fine, deep pile carpeting. Man could get busy in here. Make yourselves at home. There's a sandwich in the director's lunchbox. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Fat Bot, you can sit here in the engineer's lap. Hey, where's your mother, Bender? Who? Your estranged mother? The one you want to be proud of you before she dies? Ooh. Oh boy, I gave her a ticket to Fat Bot. Eh, whatever. The important thing is, she'll get to hear the podcast from the comfort of her own deathbed. Get over here, Bender! We're on the air in five and a half seconds! Coming! And three, two, cue music! Can you see the actors, Leela? Yeah, just not in three dimensions, in case you forgot again. Okay, geez, I apologize, Leela. I threw out the sculpture. Anyway, it's an audio podcast, so just use however many ears you have. You honestly don't know how many ears I have, do you? I don't even know how many ears I have. What is wrong with you people? This is a recording studio! Everybody shut up and action! As the podcast began, the audience was treated to the dulcet tones of the All My Circuits announcer, who happened to be yours truly, Don Cunningham. Let's hear what I sounded like. Hi, this is your announcer, Don Cunningham welcoming all our listeners here on Earth, as well as our brave robots in uniform fighting mostly against each other. And remember, friends, All My Circuits is brought to you by Chairman Grau's Second Class Borax Flakes, because not everyone needs the good kind. Ooh, excuse me again. As our story begins, Calculon is alone in his spacious woodshop, making a birdhouse. 
As a business tycoon and professor of East Asian literature, I relish the opportunity to craft something with my own hands and let my mind wander. I mutilated myself. All oh, the pain is penetrating into every nuance of my performance. When what was left of Calculon awoke, he was in the hospital, surrounded by friends and loved ones. How are you, Calculon? You are Calculon, right? With your head and body gone, it's, it's hard to tell. Yes, it is I. I mean, it's basically just a hospital bed with some wires on the pillow. Speaking of which, I wonder how they keep the hospital sheets so white. Probably <coughs> Chairman Grouse Borax Flakes. Yes, Chairman Grouse. Ask for them wherever flakes are sold. Hi, I'm Dr. Human Friend. Tell us, Doctor. Will Calculon make a full recovery and fulfill his dream of sailing the Atlantic Ocean solo? I don't know. Let me check his pulse. Quiet, Boxy Robot. I'm trying to check his pulse. Uh-oh, that's not good. Do you have any next of kin, Calculon? Only my estranged son, Antonio Calculon Jr. But we haven't spoken since that foolish quarrel over the length of his sideburns. Alas, I shall never see my son again. Father! <gasps> Antonio, beloved fruit of my loins. I thought I told you to trim those sideburns. I'm so sorry. I haven't been around much, Dad. But before you go into that long power down, there's something I need to tell you. Oops, hang on. My door fell open. Ah! Ah! My ears! Aha! So you do have ears. Where's that horrible sound coming from? Sorry, it's this thing in my chest. Let me just... I can't close the door! The force of the sound waves is too strong! I am not a sound wave! Look! The sound wave is speaking! I am Klaxon! Hear me! Indoor voice, Klaxon! Indoor voice! Yeah, the noise just keeps coming out of me! It's like a Greek food burp! Excuse me! Oh, for the love of what you call it! The sound wave is destroying the ceiling tiles! Wait for me to get out first and then run for your lives! People tried to flee, but it was no use. For the noise was coming from everywhere, erupting from every device that had been tuned to the ill-fated podcast. And as Bender's dying mother listened to the unpleasant racket, she grew morose. Sorry you didn't get to hear Bender, Mrs. Rodriguez. Now you'll have to die sad. Oh, stop crying, or you'll make me cry too. <laughs> the frightened crew members hurried back to Planet Express and huddled in the professor's laboratory. Oi, what a hullabaloo. I'm just glad I don't have ears. Aha! I knew somebody didn't have ears. Hmm... The sound seems to originate from this mysterious object in Bender's chest. No one knows how it got there. Ooh, let's have a look at it. Sweet zombie Jesus. What is it? Incisive question, Scruffy. It's a PCD, or podcast containment device. You see, in the 21st century, there were so many podcasts produced that humanity couldn't keep up, and the majority went unheard. Before long, there were billions and billions of them, most featuring Chris Hardwick. Something had to give. It was humanity or the podcasts. Listen, I miss my guess. That's where the PCD come in. Exactly so. I've underestimated your intellect, Scruffy. All of the podcasts were loaded onto a high-capacity PCD, launched into space, and abandoned for all eternity on the deleted file planet. Jumpy on six. Seven, you imbecile! But, Professor, I've thrown out loads of files. Incriminating spreadsheets, Fry's Opera, Zoidberg's harassment claims, and none of them ever came back and started screaming at me. How is this possible? 
Easily. It's a simple case of complexogenesis, the process by which anything of sufficient complexity comes to life and starts causing a fuss. Kudos, Professor Farnsworth. You have explained my existence in a way that gets the big picture right, while still mangling essentially all the details. Enough gabbing, Klaxon. Tell us what you want so we can give it to you and go to sleep. I told you what I want. Well, we weren't listening. What I want is to be heard. Uh, sorry, what? I, I want, want to be heard! I'm bursting with facts and stories that no one ever listened to. The five interesting things about sauerkraut. A serial investigation of corrupt monkey trainers. The true story of Zoidberg's harassment complaints. I think we've heard about enough. I'm gonna smash this PCD with my bureaucrat hammer! And that's that! Back to work, people! I thought it was bedtime. Wait a second. I still hear something. That's because I'm no longer in the PCD! I now exist as a creature of pure sound. A standing wave of immense amplitude, spanning the entire planetary atmosphere! <laughs> Prepare to listen to 58 billion podcasts at the same time! Welcome to Notice Podcast. This is episode number 1,871. No, it's unbearable. We'll go mad like this. <laughs> oh, also, my mom never heard me on the podcast. Wow, there's a lot happening. And on top of everything else, let's not forget Leela is still furious at Fry over that inconsiderate nude 3D sculpture. They just haven't mentioned it for a while. And now, a word from Klach the Avengers' Borax Flakes, the flake that sterilized Lake Erie. Folks, if you're like me, you never much liked Lake Erie anyway. I reckon they ought to give Klach the Avenger a medal instead of trying him for war crimes. So buy a box of Clocks Borax Flakes today and help fund Clocks Daring Prison Break. Futurama is also brought to you by Futurama. Dear God, that's an infinite loop. The universe will be destroyed. No, it's a mobile game now. I heard about it because I'm important. Experience the world of tomorrow today in Futurama Worlds of Tomorrow. Explore planets oozing with adventure. Play the Futurama characters you know and love, or kill them. That's fun, too. Even create your own new New York and boss it around with your finger. Download now for free on the App Store and Google Play. Friends, Futurama is also proud to welcome a new sponsor tonight. Here he is now, the robot with no name. Uh, hello. Buy my products or services? Why was I built? Someone help me. We now return to our podcast where newscasters Morbo and Linda were about to report on Klaxon, the podcast alien blasting billions of podcasts at... We interrupt this podcast with an important podcast. Which podcast are we interrupting? All of them! The people of Earth are going mad tonight. Their brains ravaged by 58 billion simultaneous podcasts. Reports are coming in of respected anchor women exhibiting symptoms of audio madness as they beat Ow. their co-host with a microphone! Ow. Ow. Stop that! You're deflating my head! <laughs> Back at Planet Express, the professor was cobbling together an invention using nothing but electronic and mechanical components of every conceivable shape and size. Good news, everyone! Again? I've invented a way to block out the sound with podcast cancelling earplugs. Here, shove these in. Ow! Not there! In your ears! Ah, oh, okay. I need another pair. As the crew members inserted their earplugs, they were finally freed from the unbearable drone of the alien. Ah, 
that's better. But wait, how can we hear each other? We can't! Got it. However, we can still communicate, because the earplugs convert words into text that appears directly on your retina. I see that. But how do we know who's speaking? Well, different fonts, of course. Ah, so who's using that scary font with the weird letter I? It is I! Oh, no. You refuse to listen to my delightfully eccentric podcast. And now you will pay the price. Fine, I'll pay any amount to not hear a podcast. For you see, there is one loudspeaker so powerful that no amount of orifice plugging can protect you. And that speaker is the entire Earth. Wait, 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 hold on, Scruffy. You're gasping in the same font as Amy. Oops, sorry. Scruffy will use italics from this point on. Did you know that sound travels even faster through solids than through air? Everyone knows that. Quiet, Scruffy. Let him speak. I'm not Scruffy. I only used italics for emphasis. I shall travel deep underground and use the planet's magnetic core as a speaker of immense power. And as you are forced to hear every word of every podcast, your cities shall be reduced to rubble and your skeletons to dust. I don't like that part about the podcasts. Farewell. The next time we meet, your eardrums will be erupting in a spray of liquid brains. <laughs> Sweet Dover soul of the Bikini Atoll! He's heading underground like a green snake in a mole hole! Wow, you're firing on all cylinders, Hermes. Yeah, but we're doomed! Doomed! Bound! With mere hours until worldwide destruction, Earth President Nixon conferred with his top general, Zap Brannigan. What are our chances, Brannigan? Pretty good, if we get in this escape pod and fly to a distant galaxy. Perhaps one with as many as 11 women for every nine men. Oh. But sir, Earth will be defenseless if we leave. We? I don't remember inviting you, Kif. To the pod! <laughs> oh. Back at Planet Express, a last desperate plan was taking shape. Quickly, hand me my cleanest, whitest lab coat. Here, pick one of these two. What the professor doesn't know is that one coat was washed with Clark's borax flakes and the other with a cheaper competitor. I'll take this one. He picked Clark's, I assume. Here's the plan. We'll put the drill cone on the ship, tunnel underground, and intercept Klaxon before he can reach the core. But he has no visible form, so we'll need to track him by sound. Exactly. And we won't be able to hear over the noise of the drill. So you'll have to remain behind, sealed in this seismic isolation tank. It looks like an electric coffin filled with Vaseline. From in the tank, you'll be able to monitor the creature's every movement. Then you'll transmit guidance to us over this ham radio. Seriously? I don't want to do any of those things. Get in! Move it! Ooh. It actually feels kind of nice. Looks lonely, though. You want company in that Vaseline? I told you we're done, Fry. Every time I think of your 3D sculpture, I get a one-eyed headache. Just leave me in my electric coffin. Everybody on board, quick! But my mom's dying in an hour, and I need to be with her. You know, to stop her from changing her will. Oh, boo-hoo. If you love her so much, bring her with us. Once Bender had crated his mother up and hoisted her into the cargo hold, the Planet Express ship began its perilous descent, drilling down through the Earth's crust. Depth 500 feet! Depth 600 feet! We're at sublimbo depth! Incoming transmission from Leela! I'm hearing Klaxon change direction. Adjust course to bearing 184 Mark 6. Roger that. Master Joystick to 184 Mark 6. When we overtake the creature, we'll detonate a compression bomb and blast it down to the size of a walnut. Then we'll trap it forever in this Daimonium walnut shell. Ooh, fancy. I can't even afford a regular walnut shell. I haven't eaten in weeks. Cough into ship! Cough into ship! The creature's making a sharp turn to the south! All steering wheels to south! Now it's heading inward! Now downward! Now down by down west! It's going in 12 directions at once! I can't picture what's happening! You've got 
too. If Klaxon starts podcasting, the world will crumble like a stale meatloaf. Oh, if I had a stale meatloaf, I could die happy. Off in the corner, Bender made a confession to his dying mother. Mommy, I'm scared. As Bender's ass chattered nervously, his mother reached out and gave him a reassuring squeeze on the shoulder with her vice-like gripper. Ow! What the heck? Which way, Leela? There's no time to spare. I don't know. The sound pattern is so complex. I can't wrap my brain around it. Oh, no! It's Klaxon! The Earth is starting to vibrate! Hear the self-important blathering of 58 billion podcasters and die! As the planet shook, the people of New New York flew into a panic. In Caracas, Nairobi, and Amarillo, the reaction was similar. While in Tokyo, people responded more calmly, accustomed as they were to periodic Godzillings. At Planet Express, the power failed. And Leela was left in total sensory deprivation, trapped in the pitch black confines of her electric coffin. Leela to Fry. Come in, Fry. Hello? Anybody? Oh, God. I'm gonna die alone in a tub of Vaseline. Just like that carnival psychic said. Cut off from the world, Leela's frantic mind scrambled for memories to hang on to. But to her dismay, all she could think of was Fry's 3D sculpture. I don't want to think about that. It has too many dimensions and not enough clothes. As Leela strained not to think about the sculpture, she suddenly experienced an epiphany. Jinkies! In the blink of her one eye, Leela had a realization so profound that even I, a professional narrator, cannot express it in words you would understand, much less enjoy. But if you think that'll stop me, you don't know Don Cunningham, the true hero of this story. For at that moment, in her mind's eye, or should I say mind's eyes, Leela suddenly perceived the sculpture from two angles at once. And for the first time, the sculpture's elegant 3D nude form became apparent to her. I can't believe it. I'm seeing Fry in three dimensions. Until now, he always just looked like a cartoon character. Then, about as suddenly as before, Leela experienced another very similar epiphany. Wait a second. I can also visualize the 3D geometry of Klaxon's sound waves. I understand where he is. But with the radio out, I have no way of contacting the ship. It was then that Leela experienced a third essentially identical epiphany. But even as I strove valiantly to describe it, all hell was breaking loose thousands of miles below ground. Are you enjoying my ten million simultaneous discussions of embroidery? Yes. It's the destruction of the entire world I don't like. Everybody shut up, Zoidberg. I'm getting a transmission from Leela. Impossible! All systems have failed, including my bowels. Impossible or not, I can hear her. Fry, I'm focusing the sound of my voice by yelling along multiple 3D paths at once. It was an epiphany I just had. Keep it down, Leela. I'm reconciling with my dying mother over here. If anyone can hear me, Klaxon's coordinates are 274 mark 32 east, negative 517 mark God damn it! She was drowned out by the embroidery podcast before she could finish! No, I heard every word. I could hear Leela's voice across time and space and whatever else kind of stuff there is. Ah, oh, Fry, you're so sweet and stupid. I'm taking us to Klaxon's coordinates now. Prepare the compression bomb. I'm on it. We'll get off it! Sure. As the tension built to a crescendo, Fry commenced the dramatic countdown. 999! 998! I'm setting it off! What's happening? I'm being compressed into an audio singularity! An infinitely insignificant podcast about nothing! Oh, so like a regular podcast? Quickly, Bender! Squeeze the Daimondium shell around him! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trying, but I can't quite bend it closed! 
I said squeeze, not bend. Are you crazy? What do I look like, a squeezer? Oh, wait a second. My mom's a squeezer. She put me through college working in the Juicero Juice Factory. You can do it, Mrs. Rodriguez. Squeeze the shell closed. What's that wrinkly old gripper? She's squeezing him in there. Go, Mama, go. You haven't heard the last from me. I've got podcasts so tedious, they make embroidery look like Star Wars. No! No! Yeah! <laughs> you did it, Mom! Give me a hug! Ow! Oh, son of a... Thus, Klaxon's nefarious plan was foiled. And although most of the world lay in ruins, the living did not quite envy the dead. Gradually, the crew worked their way back to the surface and convened at Planet Express to find Leela awaiting them. I guess you heard me down there, Fry. Leela, when you speak to me, I don't hear anything else in the world. And listen, I want to apologize again for that. No, I want to thank you. You gave me that 3D sculpture because you don't think of me in terms of my limitations. And that's what let me overcome them. Uh, Zoidberg, when you're done kissing Fry, I'd like a turn. It may be a while. Everybody, come to the front door. I have something to show you. In honor of Fry, I had his sculpture returned and mounted right here, above the main entrance, where the whole world can admire it. It's getting quite a bit of admiration already. Yep. I can see his kajigger. If the good Lord in his wisdom gave Fry a kajigger, the least we could do is stare at it. Oh, I must have a replica made from the finest chocolate. The kind that melts ever so slightly when you admire it in the Roman manner. I say, I say, Pukat! Meanwhile, back inside, Bender's mother had taken a turn for the worse. What's she saying? She says goodbye. She's just sorry she never got to hear you on all my circuits. Oh, Mommy! <laughs> Mommy! <laughs> Mind if I enter dramatically? Oh, Calculon! I'm your biggest fan! Bender, I raced over in my chauffeured mansion as soon as I heard your mother was dying. I'm here to comfort her in any way that keeps me the center of attention. Calculon, she wants to know if you can do that scene with Bender that she never got to hear. Hmm, I'm not sure. How much time does she have left? 43 seconds. I'll have to leave out most of my dramatic pauses, but okay. And... Action! Remember what was happening, Mrs. Rodriguez? This is where Calculon's estranged son returned to visit him on his deathbed. Father! Antonio! You... came. I'm so sorry I haven't been around much, Mom. I mean, Dad. But before you go into that long power down, there's something I need to tell you. Oh, never mind, Bender. She just died. What?! Before I made my big speech? Why'd you have to pause so much, Calculon? It's your fault she never got to hear how much I loved her. She died thinking I was ashamed that she was just a robot arm. But she was more than that. Much more. And you can bite her shiny metal gearbox because she saved all of you. That's how great she was. And I'm not ashamed to say it now that she's dead. But she'll never get to hear any of that. <laughs> <laughs> I heard all of it. <laughs> Mom? Why do you sound like Klaxon when you can't even talk? And you're all so dead! It's simple, really. When I squeezed the Daimondium shell, I was too weak to seal it completely. Klaxon oozed out, and before I could stop him, he penetrated my case. Ew, Mom! Gross! For the first time in my life, I had a voice. And, and he, he had, had a body. body. And, and now, now we are one. Wait, 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 you're shacking up? And you're the shack? Thanks, Thanks to, to the, the influx of Klaxon's life energy, I'm looking forward to many more happy years. Bender, Bender my dearest hope is that, that you and I and Klaxon can get to know each other as a family. 
But Klaxon's a supervillain. Are you saying my dad's a supervillain? Not oh, really. Because really? it sounds like you're saying he's a supervillain. No, no, that's, that's not, not at all, all what I... Woo! My dad's a supervillain! Let's party! Yeah! yeah. Let's go! Do the bender! Do the bender! And so, Bender and the Planet Express crew partied late into the night, leaving their bright white uniforms heavily stained. And can you guess how they got those uniforms clean? With the new Futurama game, Futurama Worlds of Tomorrow. Download it now for free wherever you download apps and stuff. This is Don Cunningham saying, Bomb, 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 bomb. This Futurama audio podcast starred Billy West, Katie Segal, John DiMaggio, Maurice LaMarche, Tress McNeil, Phil Lamar, Lauren Tom, David Herman, and special guest star Chris Hardwick. Futurama was created by Matt Groening and developed by Matt Groening and David X. Cohen. This podcast was written by David X. Cohen, Ken Keeler, and Patrick M. Verone, and produced by David X. Cohen. The editor was Paul D. Calder, and the recording engineer was Carlos Sotolongo. Futurama is a production of 20th Century Fox Television in association with The Curiosity Company. And this podcast was produced in conjunction with Tiny Co., a division of Jam City. Special thanks to Mike Sandwick, Andrew N. Green, James Boyle, Suli Ali, Chris DeWolf, and Chris Hardwick. Copyright 2017 by 20th Century Fox Film Corporation. All rights reserved. The characters in this audio production are fictitious. Any similarity to actual persons or events is unintentional. Oh, and also, don't forget to play Futurama World of Tomorrow. Get it now for free on the App Store and Google Play. I said get it, meatbag! You will play it.